community partner. If you haven't guessed it already, May the 4th is a Star Wars reference. So hopefully, hopefully everybody, everybody is in a Star Wars kind of mood today. <laughs> uh, for introductions, those on Zoom, please type your first and last name and your program in the chat. Uh, people in the room will go around and introduce ourselves, and then we have an optional activity for today. To find your Star Wars name, you take the first three letters from your first name and the first two from your last name to make your Star Wars first name. Then to make your last name, you take the first two letters from your mother's maiden name and then the first three of the city you were born in. So my name, my Star Wars name is Leswee Needla. So that is an option should you like to do so. So if you would like to include your Star Wars name, please do so. We will begin uh, with the so people Friday. in Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> And um, let's see, Brian, can somebody over there help me out? <laughs> no, no Star Wars names are coming through just yet, Miss Leslie. Okay, I no think everybody's Star still Wars trying to process names. it. It's, you can do it, guys. It's not, it's not hard. My name is Laura Bimmick. Ooh, and what's your real name? Laura Torres. And your Star Wars name? Laura Bimmick. That sounds like a Star Wars name. Good yeah, job. Like All right. Are you a Jedi or a Sith? Which one's the bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 a Sith. All right, Frank. I am I am Fraga Meeman. Ooh, Fraga. Fraga. <laughs> Brian, oh, like I like it. Brian, what about you? I haven't had a chance to work mine out yet. Okay. Okay. Shannon's got one. Uh, Shago Rukor. Shago Rukor. Ooh. Shago Rukor. All of these are sounding better than mine so far. All right. Back row. First three letters. John. Jaso Kipor. Anasa Besa. Very good. <laughs> All right. Anybody else willing to throw out their Star Wars name before we get rolling? Oh, Anasa Visat. <laughs> Anasa Besat. Very good. Very good. Right. So this is Brian. I am Bribe Kobau. Ooh, I That's like funny. it. I sound like a smuggler. Yeah, you, do. <laughs> you sound like a tough guy. All right, anybody else? Okay, now you know how to I'm find not. your I'm official not. Star Wars I'm name. Not. I'm not. I'm not. We welcome oh. all of you. So we have we have a Star Wars name coming through. Jan Kame and Liska Ralu. What was that Lisa last one? Ralu. Liska Ralu. Liska. I like that name. I like that. That's, yeah. very, that's, a, that's my favorite. Okay, I mean. you can do that. And who <laughs> is that? Who, and how Dana you? Patterson is uh, Danpa Kerbal. Danpa. <laughs> Who's well, Liska? Who's Liska? Yeah, who's Lisa Cagle? Oh, and you. Well, I think I think Lisa wins oh, no. wins the award for best Star Wars name. Yeah, I like that, Liska. Very good. All right, breaking news. Do we what, know that the audio works? That we can hear them. Somebody. They, I do. Them. Can somebody on Zoom say something? Hello, everybody. It's Amy Smith yeah, Thomas. Amy's talking and we can't hear. Her. Okay, we can't we can't hear you. So. Go to your. Um, Microphone thing at the top left. All right. And then pick headphones. I'm not seeing. Um, 
I could hear oh, Amy. Just do the one right below that one. Oh, it's you guys that just can't. Okay. Can you say something now, Zoom? Hello. Hi, everyone. We can hear each other, but they can't hear us. Yes. That is your slot there in the corner, Leslie. Um, that I have the wire plugged into or the cord plug. That is where. Oh, maybe it had to come apart there, Matt. I'm hearing that. Can you hear me, Leslie? Can you speak. I'm sorry. The three percent is a little bit. Can you hear us now? I think Bill's trying to talk. Still no sound. Hello, hello. Headphone. Came up now. All right, now one more time. Bueller, Bueller. Yep, there he is. Uh, you might have to turn the volume up on your uh, laptop. Yes. Testing one, two, three. There you go. All right. Bueller. Yeah. Bueller. We, got we got it. Yay. All right. Welcome to the. All right. Sorry about that, guys. As you may have noticed, uh, this is less. Not Brian. Brian recovering from vacation. <laughs> he is here in the room, um, but but is not feeling the greatest. So so I am I am trying to help a brother out. Um, he is he is here and and definitely set set everything up for me to be able to succeed. But obviously I am no. Brian Becker. Well, Lisa has added, thank you, Leslie, um, that her name actually is Princess Liska Ralu. Oh! <laughs> how, how, did, how did Princess come into it? Okay. Lisa, you're Princess. <laughs> I think she's talking. Maybe no. She's unmuted. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how you get titles, but yeah. <laughs> we now know we now know that Lisa is a princess. What other breaking news might you have? Things that you have going on that you want everyone uh, in the group to know about? We have a job fair that's coming up um, next Tuesday that I'm excited about. Um, I. I haven't looked at my Facebook this morning because I haven't had a chance, but as of yesterday, we had off of my personal Facebook page 50 something shares. Yay. So that's, that's our that's upcoming, pretty good. upcoming Butler County Talent Tuesday. Very good. Very and good. we also had um, a young lady that earned her GED last week. Yay. Congrats. And um, I also still have, it's like United Nations here and I'm loving every minute of it. Um, I also have um, a person from China, a person from United Kingdom and a person from Guatemala. And then the, the guy that I was helping from Ukraine, uh, we found him a job, which you all, Brian, Leslie, you all know about this. Shannon and Brian, I think know about this too. Um, he has found a job, so. Great, where did he get a job at? Well, he's at Walgreens right now, but we're working on getting him into our factory here. It's uh, the aerospace uh, Black Hawk and where they make like um, airplane wings, jet wings. I mean, it's like, it's really cool. It's a cool place. I think he would love it. Very good. So thank you all. All right, who else? I, I just... Uh... This is Frank. Oh, so I, I just sent out a blast um, to community partners just before I came here. So just let me recap what I said in case you didn't get it. Uh, some upcoming events next uh, next Thursday from 10 to 12 at our center, we're having an, an expungement clinic, um, May the 23rd from 12 to three at uh, community resource fair at the Hero Center in Glasgow. Um, 
May the, the May the 30th through June the 2nd. That's the first uh, iteration of the heavy equipment operations class uh, at Sky CTC. Uh, an announcement of the Commonwealth Coders Camps that's coming up in in June. There's several dates there, and. Uh, several openings uh, provided by Bowling Green uh, Parks and Recreation for seasonal positions, um, you know, umpires, referees, volleyball instructors, groundskeepers, greenskeepers, and even an announcement for uh, uh, Bowling Green police officers. But that was sent out just this morning in case you didn't get it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Anybody else with breaking news? Yes, me. Yes. Commonwealth quarters. We're running our first ever youth summer camp, like Frank had mentioned, just to expand on that. We have the last two. We're running four weeks in June. The last two weeks are already at capacity. Um, so we have the first two weeks of June available. The camp will be from Monday through Friday from 9 to 12. It'll be held at the WKU Innovation Center here in Bowling Green. Um, so uh, please look at the flyer and enroll your uh, students, your youth. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, very good. If no one else has any further breaking news, we will move forward. Uh, we have two events coming up. We have, as Amy mentioned, uh, the Butler County Talent Tuesday hiring event and also the Warren County Talent Tuesday hiring event. So we're, we are doing, we are doing two in May. Uh, the one for Warren County will be located outside our lobby where we had the community resource fair. Um, gosh, I don't even remember when that was in the fall. July. I don't know. I, I don't even know. Okay. Well, a while back, we had that thing. And we're going to do it in the same place. So we've got those two, two events coming up. Um, also, next week, next Tuesday, um, we will be leading a workforce collective in Allen County. And uh, we encourage Allen County employers to attend that. Uh, so far, we're up to 24 folks that have signed up. So it, it's, it's looking like it's gonna be our, our best attended event thus far. So, so we appreciate all you all who have participated in those and shared that information. Oops, I think uh, skip one. No, do I go back? There we go. Sorry. Okay, uh, next announcement. Uh, we've got community action. Head Start is hiring. Um, the, you know, the graphic is not associated with Head Start. I will make that perfectly clear. I just wanted to <laughs> I just wanted to add something Star Wars to it. Uh, so if, uh, if you know of anyone who might be interested in the community action position. <coughs> oh, let me say real quick, the main, the main reason we wanted to make everybody aware of that, <clears throat> and I want to thank Heath, I know he just got on the call. He helped make an introduction uh, for Josh Zazak and, and I and our board with um, the child care issue in our region because Head Start operates in all 10 counties. So we went to meet with them and find out kind of what issues do they face? What's their capacity like? And they said, well, we have more capacity. We don't have enough staff to fill our rooms in, in some of our locations, like in Bowling Green and Warren County, they could run three more classrooms if they had six more people. So that takes a lead teacher who has to have a two-year degree or be in the process of getting a two-year degree in associates in um, early childhood education and then an assistant, and the assistant just has to have a certificate, and they offer that internally. But the biggest, most revealing thing that came out of it was you get free child care in any state-approved, state-sanctioned facility, not just Head Start, if you work there. So we really wanted to get the word out about this because um, for anybody who says, well, I'm just going to pay as much as I make if I go back to work, or if it's like a, you know, maybe a two- to income earner family or, or somebody in that situation says, I can't because it costs so much for childcare. 
I don't think there's, we've asked follow-up questions. There doesn't seem to be a cap on the amount of kids. <laughs> so like you got five babies, I guess they all five get a slot, but I mean, it, it does come up to, you know, who's got openings. That's probably going to be the logistical part of it, but um, the fee would be waived. So that is a tremendous employee benefit, even though the pay is in the 10 to 15, $16 an hour range, depending on how much education you have and what position of those two you're going to be in. Um, so anyway, there you go. We wanted to get the word out to all the partners um, about that. All right. Because our first question when we met with the director was, have you advertised this? And she's like, it's a good idea. So here's a flyer. I'll ask that question. Uh, in uh, spending so much time in high schools, uh, I've run into several, you know, these young ladies that have been certified in uh, certified career ready in with the early childhood uh, path pathway. Would there be any? That's a good question. Um, I started that conversation with the director because I mentioned <laughs> Matt helped get us a, a tool through KY Stats to know how many kids typically, or you know, I think in one year, last, the previous year were in a career pathway. Um, and I sent her the information and Matt showed me how to pull it for the childcare uh, in the region. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was surprising how many students do take those classes or, or could co-op and, and, um, and do it. So, but I was giving that information to her for a lead to go talk to the kids in the high school in order to recruit them mm -hmm. to come be employees after. But I don't know how that would work. I would, Cause she said you could be 18 months away from graduating. Well, an associate's degree is supposed to be two years. So to me, that means you could be one semester in. So if you've got one of those classes mm -hmm. already done, I don't know how many credits you would have to have, you know. So yeah, that's a good follow-up question to ask her. Was anybody else aware of this? I mean, we just this was sort of new, like big news to us, but did anybody else know this? Keith, did you know it? Yeah, well, about the child care credit, that's relatively new. Um, but yeah, I was aware. Okay. Anybody else? Is this news to everybody else then? Okay, I'm gonna say yes. They're gonna, they're gonna, I saw some thumbs up and some heads. Okay. All right. So community partner team, I replaced our, our arrow that we usually use with a lightsaber. Um, I need a sound effect for that. We do, we do. And, you know, so, so make your own lightsaber noise as you pretend to click the I'm interested button. This is, this is how we get more people uh, into the community partner team. Um, so if you know of anyone who might be interested, there's a partners tab on our website. You click this form and you can be part of this growing group of awesome. So our, the heart of today's meeting is to discuss options on a cross-functional team of regional service providers who are available to meet with potential clients at locations accessible to clients. Um, we will be trying to brainstorm and talk about, um, talk about the the options that might be out there, who might be willing to participate in this type of thing and how feasible and doable we could get something like this up and running. So it's my understanding that um, we're sort of taking the idea of uh, what Shannon is currently doing with our access points and trying to see if we can do something similar with community partners. Is that, is that pretty close to what we're, what we're looking at? Yeah, so I think we mentioned this at the very beginning of the year, because um, I remember we got some initial interest from people about it. So we just kind of wanted to get some formal, more formal conversation about it and maybe some informal commitments um, just for planning purposes, so we could maybe try to get this thing active and launched by the summer. 
Yeah, it, I mean, the, and Shannon can speak to this better than, better than anyone. Um, the access points are wonderful. Um, I think the more we can have of those, the more effective we are as service providers. Uh, we want to make it easy for people to find assistance. So that's the purpose of, of our meeting this month. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty and see, you know, who wants to be a part of this and how do we need to organize organize such an effort. Shannon, what are what are your thoughts on on how how good this could be? Um, <clears throat> Can you reframe the question? <laughs> um, as far as you know, the idea of more partners um, being similar to access points uh, and having the having the ability for us to expand our reach. Um, what what possibilities do you see or you know, what, what are your thoughts on, hey, this, this would be, this would be helpful for us as, as an organization, this would be a good thing, you know. Uh, well, expanded reach, of course, is always good. Um, and, uh, you know, getting the word out there, letting people know that we can be reached is, uh, I think, more important than actually having a warm body in, a, in one certain place on, on a regular basis. Uh, a lot of the people that I interact with these days are referred to me through, um, through access points, but, but it's hit and miss as to how many human beings I see on any given day. Now, yesterday in Logan County, I saw three people and you know, two of those were walk-ins, one was an appointment. And that was a, you know, that was a busy day, but there are days that um, I will go to an access point and nobody necessarily shows up, but that doesn't mean that they, that they can't still connect that person with me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's more of a, hey, I'm here on this day, but I'm available in many other ways all through the month. Um, you know, if they, can, if they can call me, we can set up a phone appointment. A lot of what we do can be done over the phone. I think it's just, uh, you know, the, the more we put out word about our availability, um, and just give them touch points, um, the better off we'll be. Yes, okay. yes. What we've been seeing this week best lately is, uh, our example from the jails. Yeah. Um, where we go, and it's us and Goodwill and United Way and whoever else wants to join us, uh, and we go talk to the inmates who are going to be released uh, 30, 60, or 90 days out. I mean, we tell, we all get up and tell them about all of our resources. So it's kind of like a, a mini resource fair mm -hmm. uh, that has a captive audience there. So that's kind of 20. Um, so I think we're looking to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, let me, I'll hang some meat on this bone, on this idea. So, you know, the idea is that we got all these partners. We all have got great resources. Can we go together? Can we go to a jail together? Can we go to a food bank together? Can we go to a recovery center together? Uh, can we go into a school together? And it might not make sense for everybody to, to go together all the time. It might make, you know, for, for Denise and Logan County, there might be strategic places where it makes sense for her to be a part of the team on a certain day and in other days, maybe not. But that's the idea we want to get to is we're not seeing a lot of customers come into our building. And if they're not going to come to us, then let's go to them. And where are they? Where are the captive audiences? And how do we get to them as a team? And so uh, that's the idea that we want to we want to work with this group. I mean, we've had interest expressed by OBR, uh, by by Adult Ed, by Goodwill. I think there's a lot of willing players. Uh, we just have to kind of nail down the locations and the times and um, and see what works for for everybody. So uh, if you if you like this idea, if you want to be part of this idea, that's kind of that. This is the today's where we want to hear some feedback from you. And if it's not a good fit for you, that's okay too. We'll certainly continue to do warm handoffs and referrals. But uh, but rather than send Shannon out there alone and unafraid, why don't we why don't we uh, why don't we uh, marry up some other partners with her when she goes? That's that's the idea.
Um, Leslie, can can I say something? Sure, absolutely. Uh, okay, um, we're kind of doing that. Um, it's pretty cool. Aaron and I sit down together, and Pointer and I, and we um, come together, and we have what we call pre-release classes that we're doing at the jail mm -hmm. where they don't have an excuse to say well I didn't know about this or if I'd if I'd known about this I wouldn't have done this you know all those excuses sometimes that we get for that well we had um myself um Aaron Pointer <laughs> Christy Fuller for therapy we had um some places of uh, recovery homes that they could go to Chris Kentucky Christian Recovery was there we had numerous people from the community and from Warren County that came that has that, that could help too. We all joined forces. Uh, Matt Bacon was there. Um, Brittany was there. There was just numerous. There was like about ten of us that were there. And um, Jana, who is Aaron's sidekick, um, made a big folder full of all these things that we all do and phone numbers and contact information. And now these inmates, these fifteen to sixteen inmates that were in there have no excuse to say, well, I didn't have a place to go. Chad was there too. I didn't, you know, Goodwill can do this for me or, you know, Miss Smith Thomas can help me get my GED. You know, they have no excuses. So I just wanted to throw that out there. We call it pre-release class. We're having it on the second Friday of every even month from now on out. So, and it's working really well. Very good. So it sounds like to me, we are talking about maybe two possible things. Um, us going into places together is one thing. And then maybe establishing where other locations would be that would, that would catch people. Um, access points overall, I mean, the idea is fantastic. It's just sort of a roll of the dice. Will there be people there that day if they haven't set up an appointment in advance? So is that is that pretty fair? Okay. All right. Um, so the next question are you or someone from your team responsible for going out and recruiting new clients or customers if not would you or they consider this so again i think we're looking for interest um we're looking for you know hey i'm willing to give this a shot um i think my location you know sees a lot of foot traffic so again, this is this is open for discussion. Um, the more conversation we get, the better ideas and plans will develop. Well, so we know Shannon does it very actively on behalf of career team and really on behalf of the board. Um, We've had different designated staff. Matt had formerly done it with high school and college students. Anna's doing it with New Americans. Jana, it's already been mentioned, does it with re-entry. Um, our board staff sort of go out uh, and about quite a bit. And I know Anna has started a mechanism with going into the local high schools. Um, I don't know that we would count that as access though, but I, I, that's been more like a workshop series over the course of the year. I know Heath has been able to accompany her, uh, Matt and Shannon, Leslie, you have, Laura. I mean, there's been a lot of different partners that we've gotten into that. Um, but that's also like another captive audience, you know, and that's been more awareness of services. But I don't know that we're necessarily looking for the students to start participating in any of those services yet. Maybe like resume definitely and, and with Career Edge. But um, I think... I think what we want to pick up from you guys is if you have a recruiting person or you are it, like what, what recommendations do you have um, about getting out and about? Or, I mean, Shannon, who gets out and about, said, well, it works just as well sometimes, just that people know who I am and I establish the referrals and all of that. You know, you can walk into a place where you would think that people would flock to you. You mm -hmm. know, I, I walked into a homeless shelter, you know. 
And, and I'm, I'm representing the services that Kentucky Career at the Center has to offer. So you would think that they would all want my help. But what I've found <coughs> over the years that I've done this is that they're a mercurial crowd and that you have to be uh, opportunistic. You, if you are not there at, uh, at when they're feeling desperate and they're feeling in need of help, uh, you can show up the next day and make that they don't bat an eye. So um, I think even, I guess what I'm trying to say is like if we, could choose key points and uh, and say, these are the services we offer. When you have someone come in here who is looking for a job, looking for food, looking for recovery, looking for any of these services, please give them this card and tell them to call this number and call right now, you know? And, uh, and, and I find that works well with several of the, uh, the access points. You know, I might not be there on that day, but if they can say, this is her number, you call her, uh, and I give them my cell phone number. And then if I can catch them at that point where they feel that they want help, because next day they might not want it anymore. Mm -hmm. So if I can catch them right then and, and tie something down, you know, let's talk about it now or let me call you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a much better success rate. And I don't want us to get overly hung up on, um, you know, because we have access points and all that kind of stuff. I don't want us to get hung up on that word. Um, we're not necessarily talking about, hey, we want everybody to be an access point. This is more informal and supportive and, hey, we can help each other and we can, you know, how, how are we together going to meet the, the greatest number of people is sort of how I'm, how I'm looking at this. Hi, uh, this is Shanna from Audubon. The, I'm a career readiness trainer. Um, mm -hmm. So our, our setup's a little different, you know, because we're contracted uh, with the state. So like we, we get referrals from case managers, they refer out to career coaches and then, then the career coaches and I get together and we do our job readiness, uh, classes, but I don't see why we couldn't still do our own version of recruiting because our clients are always their, their snap or KTAP. Um, but as long as they get the referral from a case manager, they can take, um, you know, if they get that referral, they're, they can, you know, get into the um, the JRA or the employment readiness training class, and then and and that can all be, you know, customized depending on if it's, um, you know, if they're wanting to get into to school or if they're wanting to get into a, um, a Kentucky Works like training program. There's so many options, but I feel like right now we're sort of limited on um, reaching people, honestly. Um, it's just after COVID, it, it just, it really went downhill and, um, the class sizes are non-existent to one every couple months where I could be taking five or six people in a county. Cause I cover all 10 counties. So I, I just, any, I, any ideas from you guys on even how I could increase class sizes, because right now I, I could be reaching a lot more people than I am. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're talking about. Shanna. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you, do you have designated spots now or have you guys since COVID? I mean, like I said, right now, it's just we get referrals from case managers yeah. in each individual county. Uh, if they feel like they're the client's a good fit, um, then it just kind of goes through the channels and it just, it just seems to trickle. Like I thought I was going to have a class in Logan County for one client this month and it just sort of fell through at the last minute. Yeah. And Pre-COVID, you're talking, you know, how, however many years ago now, classes used to be four or five, you know, four or five clients per class in each county every month. And let's just say I've only had one class in person um, in the last few months. And I, I feel like I really want to get to where I can help more people and be out there just I want to be out in the counties and doing a lot more than I than mm -hmm. I currently am. And I, I just I just I need ideas to do that, and I think this would be a great way to do it. And I'm definitely on board. So. That's awesome. We yes. need you. Yeah, I think so. I, I hear the points that Shannon's making, and I think when a person comes into your life or your office, 
And then you're like, hey, for better or for worse, I just connected you to a hundred different things and you're about to find out about all hundred of them, right? <laughs> what, we're talk what we're talking about is those people that don't even come into our, one of our sites. How do we get out to people that don't even know about um, the Kentucky Works program, mm -hmm. that don't even know um, that they may be able to receive disability benefits and work, that may not know that there's part-time job opportunities that might be at, you know, just down the street from where they live and all those kind of things, or, or even adult education services, all these, all these different types of things that where can we, where can we set up trip wires <laughs> <laughs> to have a conversation with people, you know, that don't proactively go seek us out, but that we're kind of, we're kind of, we're, we kind of caught them while yeah. they are out and about. Um, because we, I think we do do a stellar job as a workforce system of referring to each other. And we've had, I think, fair to say, I mean, we've had really good retention. I mean, think about all of you guys, especially so many of you on the call have joined faithfully every month for these community partner team meetings. You remember what they were like before COVID and, you know, when we used to get in a room all together and meet, and there wasn't even a Zoom option. And um, I mean, we, I think we, we all work really well and respond to each other, but how do we how do we make more people aware that we all exist? So Shan, that's exactly what we're trying to do is just like who who wants to go sort of be Lewis and Clark and figure out where we can well, go like to some uncharted territory. If someone is if someone is interested in taking this, the the job readiness um, class that 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 I provide, it's twenty hours a week um, for twenty days. Well, thirty depending. I mean, it's twenty or thirty. But I mean, all they need is the referral from a, their case manager. And then it, once it gets in motion, it's it's simple. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's getting that word out there that, that's, that it's an option is the, is the real problem right now, I think. Yeah. Uh, and Lisa, so you have your hand up. Go ahead. Oh, good morning. Um, Lisa Cagle with Great Onyx Job Corps. And thank you so much for the invitation to this meeting. Um, I was a mental health counselor, then also a career, uh, career counselor just moved into this new position as a VDS. We have a lot of acronyms. It's just a vocational development um, person. Um, I see students um, about 70% of completion. Um, and then we transition them into um, jobs, um, advanced training, military. So Shannon, I would love to send a bus down there and pick you up and have you come to our center. Uh, we are trying to launch something in July. I don't know if this will fit in. And like I said, I'm new to this position. But in July, we're going to have, um, we have a theme called Salem the Seas. And we're going to have uh, seven or eight different organizations come into our gym. It's going to be sort of like um, all the children will have, our students will have passports. They're going to go to each, each booth, which will represent an island. And they're sailing these islands, and this could be a really good booth um, if if this fits uh, to have you in um, and speak with our students. It's a captive audience because they all are on campus. So we're our OBS right now is around 80 to 90 students, and that's going to be one of the requirements is that they do attend this launch that we're having in July um, and having different um, you know setups there. I'm looking for jobs. Um, the military will be there um, on how to do resumes, um, on uh, job placement, a college. So if that's something that this fits in, I would love to send an invitation out. And it's going to be a really fun day. Great. Uh, Hannah has asked a question in the chat, um, and I think it's directed to you, Lisa. She's asking if that would be what you just described available for justice-involved individuals. She has several looking for employment, and that would be a good resource for them. Yeah, I could double check with that with my supervisor. Um, right now, we're tar if I'm hearing the, the question right, we're targeting to our students on center right now and, and getting referrals out for them. As, but are you asking me if the public can come in as well for that? I think that's what Hannah's asking, yes. OK. Um, let me double check with that. I, I don't know. but. Um, any person that you have that's looking um, for, you know, we, I don't know if anyone is familiar with that from with Job Corps, but it's ages from 16 to 23. Um, and we do house, uh, we have um, a campus there on site and um, we provide um, a training for them um, in different areas at the Whitney or at the um, Great Onyx Job Corps. 
and also high school diploma and driver's license. So they could also apply as an applicant and actually join our pro program. Once they're in, then we're gonna follow them through um, removing all those barriers. And at the end is we are looking for placement for jobs, um, college, advanced training, um, and military as well. Okay, so She's I can got her, uh, her email in the chat. So I think you can, yeah. Awesome, I have it, thank you. Yeah. Um, guys, I had a thought that I wanted to run by you uh, and see see if you all had any additional ideas. Um, just in listening to everyone talk, um, I thought about why don't why don't I do a a survey um, to all all the members of the community partner team? And here's what I'm thinking. Uh, it would include your name and organization, of course, um, and then your ideas. You know, I'll have a pull down menu for each county. And if you have ideas for this would be a, a good place, you know, with possible, you know, people who could benefit from our services, this organization, this, you know, this specific locations and do that by county. Um, just like uh, on the slide here, if you know somebody at the location who we could approach and say, hey, we'd like to get a group to come visit you on this date or whatever. Um, so again, the idea if you're open to going out together, um, if you're open to being an informal access point at your location itself. And then also, um, I, would be, I would be very interested in taking, you know, getting information on if you all have some sort of scheduling or appointment system that you are currently using that works. Um, the one that we had previously used um, we, we were experimenting with users and inadvertently got charged for all these experimental users. So anyway, we, we, we canceled that. Experimental <laughs> user, user sounds illegal, Leslie. Yeah, so, so we, we canceled that scheduling software. Um, so those, those are the questions that I'm thinking of. And I'm not saying that's the be all end all. That's just, these are the ones that immediately came to mind. Is there anything else that would be helpful uh, that you can think of as far as adding to this, you know, this survey? I, I just feel like this would be a good way of compiling all the information and, and looking at what we have and it's in black and white. I'm a little confused on what that would look like when you say, do you want us all to go out together? Well, I mean, we could we could go out for fun and we could, <laughs> and in addition to that, um, like if, if we wanted, you know, if, if it worked out schedule wise to where we could have three or four partners say, we're gonna be at this location on this day, you know, and have a sign up or whatever, if you're available. Um, I guess that's, that's sort of what I was getting at. Does that make sense? Like so, a job event or a resource event? Are you gonna Sort of like that, yes, but not that formal. More of a, like, let's just look at, take the example of a recovery center. Hey, there's going to be a few of us coming to this recovery center on this day to tell you about resources. So it would not, you know, it would not be as elaborate as a resource fair. It would just be you know, and this would this would be scheduled based on need and demand. But again, we're trying to reach people who need our services but don't know about it. Well, I mean, I have to recruit for this program in several counties and, and that struggle's real. Like in a couple, I don't have any issues at all, but then, you know, like we attended the workforce development meeting the other day in Hart County. 
Hart and Butler. I, I just, I don't know what I'm missing there. I pound the pavement. I hang up flyers. I've done advertising on the radio, the internet, the newspapers. I attend any events and set up and I'm still missing people. And I mean, the struggle is real. So I'm definitely on board with whatever. <laughs> if you guys can figure out some solutions, please let me know what they are. Yeah, and that, and I think that's what this meeting is about, is us talking, you know, us throwing, throwing ideas against the wall and seeing what sticks, because, you know, we're, we're right there with you, you know, um, it, it can be frustrating. Um, so, so we're just trying to look at, look at these kinds of services uh, through a new lens, and this would just be the starting point. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say a quick summary. I'll oh, go ahead. Was that Pam? Yeah, Pam. Oh, ahead, just, Pam. thanks. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just going to say, I, um, I'll i bring a little bit of backstory real quick, too. Like, so, again, some of you guys were, were old faithful friends to the workforce board here, but we remember when a consultant before there was even staff for the board, you know, was setting it up. And the whole idea of access points was um, <clears throat> making the region aware, mostly because there was not a career center in every county um, that people could just go to. And it was, it, it seemed really lame to tell people you had to drive all the way to Bowling Green or all the way to Glasgow to get help. Um, so Shannon has been, I think, the only one ever in this role, right? That's pretty much been the mobile career center so she forward faces like for on behalf of like all of us, but I can tell you as a place that was a host site for three of the four counties I, I was responsible for in my program in adult ed, it felt weird <clears throat> to say, why would I have somebody in my building when I could just refer them through email or a phone call? Like we know that we can just do that. But some of those sites have turned out to be some of the more productive sites, you know, like even Bowling Green. I'm like, why would, why would Sky CTC, the main campus there, need to be a site? If they can get to us, they can get to the Career Center, but you'd be surprised. Again, it's opportunistic, as Shannon said, um, that some people are just in that mode or that mood, but also the prompting from the host site to say, hey, they're going to be here so let's sign you up and let's you know let's let's make this happen captain and and you know it, and it does rather than saying would you promise me you'll go see them tomorrow by driving over there and then and then they don't do it um but but what felt weird as a host site is you're just like i know some of my students or some of the people participants we have like they're not going to be interested in this or it's not going to it's not going to matter as much again it's when they're in the mood that they're going to be interested so like you can come here, but like, I can't promise you anybody's going to want to talk to you. That felt weird as a host site that it depended on, on my participants expressing interest in order to sign up or, or take the next step for, for other services. So um, I think what we're thinking of is like, I mean, I haven't thought of this before, but maybe it's the local greasy spoon. <laughs> And it's like, that's the idea. And, and if it's like Mel's diner, let's just say like, then we call Mel, can we come set up on your porch, you know, and, and, and just be there to catch the lunch traffic. Because, and then if somebody comes, it's like, what's this? Like, we're not here to sell you anything. We're just, oh, you know, my, my cousin could probably use that. Okay, we'll take our information or we're going to be back here this time, you know, on this date next month, tell them to come by and see Yes, that, that that's kind of the idea. And I think there'll be some experimentation to it even more than Shannon's because Shannon's kind of been <clears throat> pretty well locked in since we set up a lot of the sites years and years ago. This could be, well, Mel's Diner, like yeah, we, we tried it. Mel thought it would work, but we're not getting anybody. We're going to go try, you know, Carol's something, something. <laughs> so, you know, we just kind of bounce around to see maybe like, and Pam, what you're saying is if they're not going to the service providers, like where can we go catch them? that might be more public places. So that's what we want to hear your ideas. And I like the idea of a survey. Just tell us tell us those spots. I mean, I think Mint Gaming Hall would be amazing for Bowling Green. There seems to be a lot of traffic every day <laughs> at Mint Gaming Hall. I don't know if that's our target audience for services, but they're getting foot traffic. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, and again, let's just say something like a Mint Gaming Hall or a Mills Diner opened up, then we would just turn around and tell you guys who wants in. We're going to be there. They agreed to let us do this on this Thursday. Who wants in? Yeah, and, and that's sort of that's like sort of that. what I'm thinking. A very informal, you know, I mean, don't you wouldn't be obligated to come to every single thing, you know, but but just so we can, you know, we can put on more of a unified front and hopefully, you know, think of this as like a covert operation. You know, we're we're going in trying to reach job seekers you know, under, not really the guys, but, you know, under the umbrella of, hey, we're just all getting together to shoot the breeze and drink some coffee. And by the way, let me tell you about what we can do for you. Yeah, and I think another successful model was the rapid responses. So if you guys don't know what these are, normally our Kentucky Career Center for Give Lend um, that an employer is going to be downsizing or closing altogether. We try to assemble a team that wants to be there on site to provide services to those people because it's opportunistic. They're they're in the mood to, to be open to maybe going back to school or to hearing about other employment opportunities, getting their resume improved. Um, that's worked really well. We've had a lot of um, great partners. Some of you have been involved with that. So we're just saying, how can we do that kind of concept more often? So so sounds like definitely get the survey um if anyone has suggestions for adding you know questions or whatever uh send me send, please send me an email um as soon as possible today because i would i would like to get this this fixed and out if not this afternoon maybe tomorrow yeah um just while it's all fresh fresh on our minds. And you guys might give us feedback and say, I've never been allowed to go to this place, but I would really recommend it. Or I might still not be allowed to go, but if you guys can go, you should go. Like just wide open. And if you got a relative that runs Mel's Diner, then make an introduction <laughs> for us. <laughs> All right, upcoming meeting topics. Uh, our June meeting will be a demonstration of our job seeker map. I'm guessing that's Anna and Brian. Brian and Anna. <laughs> Brian and Anna. We'll be doing that June 1st. Uh, do you want to get, do either one of you want to give just a little insight into that? Yeah, just what the what the job seeker map is. Oh, you see, oh. so the, the, the map or the interactive guy or the names now is a job seeker map was created especially for new Americans, but it's for all people to find uh, you know all the information and the correct information in one uh, place, we can say. And they they can find this information in different languages, not only read the information in their own languages, they can, you know, hear the information in this language. It's focused in the uh, labor uh, field and the information that they can, uh, you know, find in this map is uh, principal is uh, mainly in five different topics, employment, uh, English, improve the English or validation of their uh, degree and title, uh, continue their education and resources. So it's, it's a very, very interesting, you know, place that the New American especially can find many different information. There are a lot of information, a lot of opportunities for all New Americans, but the problem for them is English one is the, the barrier, but additionally is they don't know how and where to find this kind of information. Uh, we presented this map for uh, High, uh, Glasgow High School last Friday, only in uh, career opportunities, training opportunities, and was incredible, great, you know? 
and it surprised me every time the, the quantity of opportunities has people here. But again, this map can connect, not only given the information is connect directly with the, web, or the link where they can apply or with other, you know, our partner that can involve there. So, so it's, it, a, it's a great- it Absolutely be worth be worth your time to see this, to, you know, to see what it looks like, to see how it works. Um, exciting stuff and a lot of time and effort is put in, has been put into its creation. So this will be, this will be an exciting meeting. Um, July 7th, I do not know if we have any, any volunteers for, for our July meeting. If not, I will add that into our survey for meeting suggestions or volunteering or volunteering someone else. So that will be part of your survey. Um, we, as again, uh, thank you for celebrating Star Wars Day with us. Um, there, there is John and me and Brian, uh, starring, starring in Star Wars. I think, I mean, John, John, I don't know where John went. He missed it. He missed it. Um, but, but Brian looks a little confused, but you know, Hey, we're, we're in the future. Maybe I don't I don't I don't understand. I, I'm not a Star Wars expert, so I don't understand, but but my hair, my hair is cool. So all right. Any other any other closing thoughts before before we end? Oh, I just wanted to say, Hannah, uh, I'm not doing my job moderating the chat, but she made a comment over 10 minutes ago that she would love to have a resource event at probation and parole. So maybe that okay. will be the site. Hannah, um, I know there's the Bowling Green office because I've been to that one a bunch of times. You have office locations. I know there's one. It's not in your jurisdiction, but Simpson County has one. But what other sites, or maybe you can put in the chat, what other sites does probation and parole have an office, or is it just the Bowling Green one? Um, the main ones that I cover are Bowling Green, Glasgow, and then Adair County or Columbia. Um, there is one in Simpson County, which is close close to us and they are they don't have a reentry coordinator basically my counterpart there at the moment um but I would love to set something up even if it's just a one day one time thing you know if it's if we have a bunch of people and tell them we're having this event have when they meet with their officer and say hey you're not employed I want you to come to this resource fair I want you to or yeah uh to come and um I really think it could be successful being at you know, either of those two locations, Glasgow or Barron County or even Simpson County, um, that new person, I could um, get them involved as well. But I just thought that we hadn't had anything in a while and our COVID stuff is winding down. We're all back and we can host things again. So I was just thinking that was would be a good thing to have maybe once or twice a year, just have something a little bit bigger. And I'd like to say, just in closing, um, the main thing that that I really want to stress with this is we are we are not looking to make anyone do more work. We're just trying to all get together and work smarter so we can get better results and and reach more people. So, so hopefully, hopefully that came across, but if it didn't, just, just throwing it out there just to be safe. Um, but thank you very much for joining us this month, and we look forward to seeing you next month and look for a survey coming to your inbox very soon.